Okay, let's take a look at um, another one. This is called the black walnut. Comes encased in a green covering called a husk and you stomp on it, remove the husk, and then let the walnuts dry out. You can use them fresh, but they're better dried. The nuts inside are more uh, mature. And the husk of the black walnut has also been used in herbal medicine uh, to kill parasites. But uh, what I like are the, the nuts themselves. And uh, once, uh, once they're dried out, they no longer stain your hands. The husk was used by Native Americans as a dye. And then they are the proverbial hard nut to crack. <laughs> and what you do with this is you get a strong nutcracker like this one. And you put that in. and it cracks open. Are there any people that have never, anyone who's a nut connoisseur who's never tried a wild nut before? Okay, here. See what you, see what you think of this flavor. I'll crack a few more open and we'll pass them out, but let's get some preliminary, preliminary judgment of the flavor. I think they're richer than commercial walnuts. Uh, a little bit of an overtone of wine You're to the floor. Yeah. Yeah, a little. It has its, it has its own flavor. Um, I'm, I'm going to be making brownies um, with these today. I've been doing a lot of work with schools and a lot of um, public tours. But I do have uh, the rest of the afternoon off. So I'm going to indulge in my passion for cooking. So I'll break a few of these open and we'll pass them around. You can separate the nut meat from the shell and see what you think. There's another one. I guess three more. Everyone can take a little piece. And these are very rich in omega-3 fatty acids, so they're quite good for you. Lower your chance of heart disease. Uh, they look like a green tennis ball when they fall off the tree. The season is uh, just ending now. There are still some good ones. So let's see, we'll pass um, this plate down. So I'm not going to remove all of the nut shells, but you can certainly distinguish the nut meat from the shells. We'll get some of the shells out. And maybe I'll crack a few more open for the, uh, for the other aisle. Okay, so this one can start in this direction. And again, beware, you don't want to bite down on a nut shell. They're also very strong, so a little goes a long way. You can put this in a recipe, one part black walnuts, one part, uh, three parts commercial walnuts, and that will, uh, that will actually work. And you'll taste the black walnuts. Now the ancient Greeks had a uh, myth about where the walnuts came from. There was a traveler and he was looking for a place to stay. Now, uh, the cultural mores of the ancient Greeks were a little bit different from the cultural mores we have today. One of the most important values was hospitality. There were no hotels and if, if uh, commerce was to occur, travelers would have to be put up in people's homes. Otherwise, uh, trade would have ground to, uh, to a halt. So uh, one, of the, one of the values that was promoted was hospitality and, uh, and kindness to strangers. So there was a stranger who came to a city and he could not find a place to stay. Everywhere he went, people turned him out and he, he needed somewhere to sleep. Finally, he went to the palace of the king and the king had him put up, gave him a bed, 
place to sleep, uh, some warm food in the morning, and it turned out that this was uh, the god Apollo in disguise. And Apollo was so grateful that he told the king that he was going to give him a gift. The king's three daughters would have the gift of prophecy as long as they used their powers in a, uh, in a ladylike manner and didn't use them for, for the powers for selfish reasons. So the three daughters became prophetesses. And um, years went by and all went well. But then the younger daughter, whose name was Caria, fell in love with Bacchus, the god of wine and drink. And he fell in love with her too. And they had a date, but she was the youngest. And back then, uh, the pecking order was really important. The eldest were supposed to get first dibs on, uh, on everything. And uh, the youngest, uh, tough luck, which uh, actually made sense. If you, have, if you have land and you divide it uh, three ways and then the three children divide it three ways, eventually it becomes, uh, it becomes useless. So the, uh, the eldest inherits everything and the two, uh, the two younger ones have to make their fortune some, some other way. So at least the lineage and the land stays intact. Uh, so this is, uh, we've sort of lost that value, that value now, but that was really important in the culture back then. So uh, the youngest was getting involved with a god, no less, and the two older sisters were really jealous and they used their powers of prophecy to determine where the two lovers are going to meet and they sent false information so they didn't meet each other. They both thought that the other one had stood, had, they both thought they were being stood up. And of course, Bacchus, the god of wine and drink, got really, really drunk. He was quite unhappy. He got drunk. And then he found out what happened. And he hurled, off his, uh, hurled out his magical powers in rage. And the two older sisters got turned into stones. Um, and the youngest sister, Caria, got transformed into a beautiful walnut tree that lived for hundreds of years. And ever, ever since then, um, people would pick the walnuts and, uh, and take them to increase the powers of love. <laughs> so that's, that's the Greek myth of where the walnut came from.